testing the mic. Is that working? Testing, hopefully everyone can hear me on this mic. Welcome to our monthly live stream and chat from Rock Manor Games, I'm Mike. And today, uh, first and foremost, we're here to talk about Star Driven, our upcoming game, which we announced this week, which will be on GameFound. So if you haven't checked already, uh, please go and follow along. There's a free gift for you. Uh, but if you're interested in learning more about the game uh, today, I was going to focus on some of the stuff we've been working and testing on with the designer, Todd and myself, when it comes to the co-op mode of the game, or one of the co-op modes, I should say, one of the scenarios. So usually what I do with these is I pop into either a live demo or a physical prototype or a digital prototype. And in this particular case, we've been doing a lot of the star-driven stuff on a digital prototype and tabletop simulator because we have We have that in our, what do you call it? We've been, we've been doing a lot online because of all the iterations we've been going through. Uh, someone's saying that our volume is low, so I'll try turning this up. You guys can tell me if this is better or worse. Hopefully this helps with the volume. Let me know, you know, hit the chat up if there's anything else wrong or going wrong and we will try to adjust. But if you give me a second here, I'm going to pop over to my laptop view of Tabletop Simulator. And I'm going to walk through at least the first co-op scenario um, and the first co-op enemy. Uh, glad that that worked for you with the volume. Okay, so I've taken the liberty of sort of setting things up. I'm going to play the smugglers here, uh, the privateers, the privateer faction. They're sort of like the Firefly crew, Firefly faction. And the first thing you do in almost every game of, of uh, Star Driven here is once you choose your faction, you're going to set up your unique faction. They all, every ship has a different hull number. Every crew has their own deck of crew members to start with. Uh, I've drawn four of these cards as my starting hand. Uh, and everyone has sort of a different allocation of these dice. Uh, green, red, and blue. And, you know, as part of setup, you'll want to shuffle these. And when the game's produced, these black areas of this mat, we're going to do a neoprene mat that's sort of like double layered. So you'll have notches. You'll have a nice, you know, neoprene map to notch all these dice in. So all these dice location spots will be, uh, will have edges so you can easily notch them in. Uh, and then the other thing you'll do when you're setting up your character is we have different uh, ship upgrades and you'll pick two of them to sort of equip with your ship. And it makes your ship, everyone has unique technology um, and you'll sort of equip your ship on what you think you know, in sort of different methodologies or modes that you think would be strong for you. So you can equip like your ion cannon and be more offensive, or you can equip your pirate radio to move reputation around from council worlds and try to influence council worlds you're nearby by broadcasting. Uh, there's also the smuggler's hold, which will help you boost missions uh, by smuggling things uh, as you're dropping things off. And then false signal helps you manipulate the warbound. And then emergency jump is a great way to get out of trouble. So I'm going to be playing the co-op mode. I'm going against the Warbound. So I definitely am going to equip this Emergency Jump. And then the other thing I will... The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to equip the Ion Cannon. Because the Pirate Rado moving around my reputation is not super advantageous in co-op. Uh, in co-op, you're dealt two... Co-op objectives, they're the same each time. These give uses to the anomalies and the reputation you're going to gain from missions. Uh, in a normal game, you would just score points competitively for doing these actions. But in co-op, you sort of need an outlet for them. 
So uh, these objective cards are sort of the two you'll start with in a co-op game. And then I've already taken the liberty of taking the uh, episode missions for co-op, shuffling them in and setting this deck up. Our goal, since I'm playing one player, is to get to the bottom of this mission deck and finish the last stand mission. As soon as I finish that last stand mission, which is on the bottom of the deck, uh, we will win. And if at any time the Warbound get uh, their five outposts on the five voting worlds, uh, we will lose. So I'm not sure I'm going to play, you know, a full, be able to play the full game of co-op. But, you know, the idea of this stream is to give you sort of behind the scenes look of what we're working on. and not only what we're working on, but also give you some information on how you play the game and how it's working right now. So before I start teaching sort of any additional rules, please keep in mind that this is sort of an in-development stream and everything is a work in progress. I literally just pushed changes to these mission cards right before the stream to sort of test out some of the things we discussed earlier this week when the designer and I played together. So while nothing major will change, there could be minor rules and changes that you see in the final product. So please keep that in mind. Uh, because I'm playing one player, we'll put just the gunboat out. The more players you have, the more of these interceptors and enemies that will start on the map. And then we will shuffle the Warbound Activation deck. And we'll shuffle the Anomaly deck. And I already put out the crew, the Freelancer Market. So we're pretty much ready to go. Um, one of the things we're playing around with in development right now is how much terror to start on planets. Um, I'm gonna try, we're trying to get limit set up, so we're gonna play with zero and we're gonna see how it sort of progresses. Uh, I do need to shuffle this if I didn't already. Uh, and then this die I'm using as a stand-in for the threat marker. We're gonna have some sort of threat marker. Threat starts at one, it'll go up to two, and then eventually three. And that's sort of how much terror the Warbound faction is putting on the map. And I should note that in co-op, in the first co-op expansion or episode, you're playing against the Warbound. You're trying to beat them. We're trying to finish enough missions to have a last stand and vanquish them. In a competitive game of Star Driven Gateway, the Warbound act as sort of the NPC ships uh, that'll poke at you. Um, we do have their damage up for co-op to make them a bigger threat. In competitive, they're not quite as big of a threat as they are in co-op, so keep that in mind. Uh, these are their outposts. If they get three terror on a world, they will get an outpost there. If we have an outpost and there's three terror, their terror will destroy our outpost, then they'll build up another three and they'll get their outpost. So sort of their point system, and if they ever have all five outposts out, we'll immediately lose. And if my ship blows up, of course, if they blow me up, I'll also lose. So I'm going to start, and I'm actually going to flip one of these over. I think this reference card is pretty accurate still. Um, so this is a reference card and sort of the basics of a turn in any in any mode of, in any episode of, of Star Driven Gateway. The first thing we do is we activate Warbound, assuming Warbound are used in the episode you're playing with. And... Then you'll take two actions. Then there's some free actions you can take. And then finally, if you've gained some XP, which is this helmet with a star in it token, you can use that to recruit or promote your crew members. Uh, and I'm going to move all of this out of the way because we're not going to use these the ship technology. And we're going to start with Activate Warbound. And I'll go back to that reference card just so you guys get a sense of how things work here and there. So the first thing you do is you activate Warbound, you just flip over this deck of cards, and you look at this number first. And the number we've revealed is a three. So the only three is here, which is this sector of space. Um, so each of these segments is a sector, and then this tile, each tile, each three sectors make up a system tile, which has a gravity number. And we'll play off that gravity number as we take some of our station actions. Uh, but you can see that the gunboat starts on five, so it did not activate. So if nothing activates with the number, you simply read this card. And this is the gunboat, and it's going to launch 
which is spawn an interceptor on the gunboat's space and then activate the gunboat. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I'm already messing this up. Uh, as part of setup, you need to choose to place your outpost on one of the planets and then place, you know, your ship launches from that planet. So I'm going to launch here. Uh, and when the gunboat activates, it says here on it, move towards the closest outpost. You know, if you reach it, remove it. Attack any player ship along the way that's in your same sector. And the gunboat at this time is going to move three sectors. So it's going to move one, two, and three towards my outpost. So that's Warbound activation. They're sort of, like I said, the NPC player, uh, the sort of pesky ship that's always going to be coming to tag your shields and try to damage your hull. Um, and now it is my turn. And on your turn, the two primary actions that you have are you can play a crew to an unmanned station and assign them to that station. Or you can activate a manned station by placing a die in one of the activation spaces for that station. So right now I can't activate sensors because I don't have anyone manning the sensor station. But as soon as I put a crew member there, uh, I can. This symbol here is the skill that is best for operating sensors. And if I place a crew there with that matching symbol, they will be eligible to be promoted. Uh, otherwise, I can't promote somebody who doesn't have the skill to station they're at. Um, so let's, I'm wondering if we should, that guy's getting pretty close. You're going to want to look at the missions over here to see what planets you can sort of visit. I also forgot that when this is revealed during Warbound Activation and Co-op, you're going to place one Terror on that location. So it's the planet I'm on. I'm looking at what missions I can do. Maybe I could hop over here and do a mission. Let's let's try it. I have, a, have some fives. So I'm going to try to do a navigation action. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to play this guy to navigation. And he's not the best skill-wise, but I like his ability. Because a free action I can do is I can exhaust any crew member on the ship to activate their ability. So here it's increase an unspent blue die by 2. So I can change this 3 to a 5. Then I'm going to use this 5 to take a navigation action. And you'll notice on this spot, I guess I should use the magnifying glass, that these dice placement spots have plus energy because using the gravity drive and using navigation to warp around the board generates, that's the way you recharge your ship. So I'm gonna be gaining five power, which will max me out at 10. And I can jump to any five on the board. So I can jump here, here, and I think that's it, because I haven't revealed much yet. So I'm going to jump to this planet. And I've spent my two actions, but I continue to take I can I can continue to take free actions. Um, so I'm going to use this ability here on crew quarters because the freelancers or privateers start with a lot less crew than United Worlds, for example. And their crew members are less skilled, but have more value. So their numbers in the top right are higher, but they've got less skills on the left side. And this ability lets me recruit a crew of three or less value from the market, and then I can discard it. So it's a way to beef up my crew and sort of recruit people from the center market. So I like this guy, because he lets me draw from crew quarters. The bug's not bad because it'll let me play guys for free. I'm going to take Vanderveer. So I do what it says. Normally you recruit to your hand. Uh, so I do that and I discard it, which means I put it on the bottom of crew quarters, which acts as my deck. But if I play a card, if I play a die here, I can always draw from there. And then lastly, I'm going to see if I can potentially do this mission. Uh, we'll see. So to do this mission, I need the two skills on the left. The telescope skill and sort of the science molecule skill and I need crew value of two and I need to discard them from my hand or retire them from my ship and that just means they're going back to crew quarters to take a rest 
It's not like I lose them permanently, but I do not. I have the science skill in my hand and on ship, but I have nowhere else. I am missing that telescope skill. So I cannot finish this mission right now, so I will end my turn. I have no XP, so I can't recruit another player or or or, or promote anybody. So my turn's going to end, and we're going to go back to Warbound Activation. And Warbound Activation's going to start by flipping this over. We're going to gain a Terror on the Ice on the ice council world over here and we'll see if a four activates we have one in five so it does not so launch is going to happen which is spawn another interceptor at the gunboat's location and the gunboat's going to move three one two three and it's going to destroy my outpost so i'll put back on my board and whenever they destroy an outpost they gain terror and Terra right now is set at 1, so we'll gain a Terra there. And that is the Warbound. So now it's back to my turn, and here's where I want to start completing missions, fighting the Warbound. Uh, but I need to get some more crew members manning the stations on my ship first. Um, I have four guys here. I want to finish this mission, so step one, I'm going to place a five here, which costs no power. There's one power and two power here, and it lets me draw five cards. It's more than enough. I only have four left, and whenever you activate crew quarters, you untap it. So if I had someone left over there, I could access their ability, but I won't, so I'm going to draw all four of my other guys. And next, I'm going to, as a free action, complete this mission. And I can do that by doing here and here. And I can pick which order I'm discarding these guys back on top of crew quarters. So I'm going to do the robot on top. That was five total value, and I have both skills covered. So obviously you want to discard or retire as, as few crew as you can. And then I will finish this mission. I can put it here under my board. I get the reward, which is max all of my unspent blue dice, so I'll get a six here. And then I get one reputation in the bottom. I put an outpost where I complete a mission, which acts as a mission blocker as well. I can't do another mission here. A new mission will come in. And I will gain one reputation on the closest council world, which is the one I did the mission on. And please, if anyone has any questions, throughout this video, please hit the, feel free to throw something in the chat, I'm happy to answer it, but most of the time what I like to do is sort of create a video where there's somewhat of a decent playthrough or behind the scenes on some of the stuff we're working on, so happy to field any questions that come in, but uh, if we don't have questions, I'm just going to keep going, so I'm sorry if I lose you along the way. Uh, Okay, so I have one action left. And I think what I'm going to do, well, I can't do it, but I could set it up. I'm going to put this guy down to set up a scan next round. So I'm going to assign TN to sensors because he that's a good spot for him so that's my turn i still don't have any xp i'm going to find xp by exploring the galaxy and uncovering these explore tokens that's where a lot of the xp is also if i use the command station uh, i will gain an xp every time i use it but command is for attacking and untapping crew so i haven't felt the need to play a card there yet but it's still early so Go back to Warbound Activation, 
they're going to gain a terror on the world I'm on, and this is just going to remove my reputation. Uh, they cancel each other out, so it's a push and pull. And then a five will activate, and a five is going to be right here, which is the Warbound Interceptor. So we're activating by number, so we can ignore the, tar the card text. And this guy is going to do what the Interceptor says, which is move towards the closest available player ship, attack any ship in the same sector. You only have two ships per sector. Uh, this ship moves four spaces, so one, two. It easily makes it into my space, and it's going to attack me. So we'll see an example of combat here. The good news is, is that as the privateers and smugglers, I start with five shields. So I'm going to take five combat dice uh, to roll as my shields. And the interceptor deals two damage. So I'll roll for both here. I'm going to roll the interceptor's damage. And then I could roll my shields. And you only spend shields if you successfully block. So these numbers would apply damage to these dice placements. Uh, so they would be coming in at three and four, taking away those prime spots that use less energy. But because I have so many shields, I rolled a three and a four. So I blocked all the damage, but I spent two shields. So I'm going to reduce my shields to three. Uh, that is the Warbound. It's now my turn. Now, let's let's do uh, the other example of let's do let's do me attacking. So this guy is a great captain. He matches. So for my first action, I'm gonna play him. I'm going to put scanning off one more turn. So I'm gonna show you an attack action. Uh, and what I want to do when I attack is I want to look at the interceptors and the numbers that the stations that are open are three, four, and six. So if I use a three, I could pick either award. If I spend a four, I'll get three power back. And if I spend a six, I'll get a reputation. So I'm going to look at my dice. I have a six. So I'm going to use that six to attack. And there should be. Let's get, there should be extra tokens in there. I'll get an XP for doing that attack. And I'll do, effectively, I'm rolling a six on this ship. It has no defense. So I'm going to hit this six here. And that's going to destroy this ship. And I'll put it back on its spot. And it'll get, I'll get one reputation. Uh, which will help protect this world from future warbound threats. Uh, so at the end of my turn, I have an XP to spend, and I'm going to use that XP to upgrade my captain and promote him. So now he's on the silver side, and his ability gets better, and he gets more skills, and his value goes up. So every time you promote a crew, they get better. Uh, and I'm going to spend my XP uh, to promote during that phase. And we're back to the Warbound. And we're going to get a 1, and a 1 is going to be this interceptor here, which is going to go 1, 2, can easily move and attack me. But the good news is we're not activating any additional launches or the gunboat coming towards taking away my outpost. Uh, so now I only have 3 shields, and these interceptors still do 2. So I'll roll for the interceptors, and then I'll roll my defense. And I missed completely. So my shields powered up in the wrong space. So I'm going to take damage at station number one. Which you just discard your die over here. Or I put it over there. Sort of my token spot. And then I'm going to take a damage at two as well. Uh, so these spots are damaged. If I ever take damage, a third damage, and I fully fill up the station, the station damage is removed. So we remove all the combat dice. But then we take a permanent hull damage. And if we blow up, we lose. So I pick the ship with the least amount of hull. It's the smallest, but 
uh, they've got some other good stuff going for them. So just have to watch that, make sure I power my shields. I can do that by going to engineering. So now that it's my turn, uh, the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to use our sensors to scan. And I should have spent a power on that attack and a power here. And I think I forgot to put, but we have a one here. There's no council world with a gravity one. So we actually missed the terror. There's two of those in the deck. So they sort of give us, they're a little bit of a whiff. They're good to have. So I'm gonna do a sensors. And what I do here is I can flip tiles adjacent to my ship until I meet or exceed the number I spent. And I did it right off the bat, flipped over a six. So uh, that I've exceeded my number. And then for each outpost on the board, I can flip one tile adjacent to that. So I knew I was gonna get at least two tiles. I'll flip this one over as well. Uh, and I'm gonna take both of these. And then after you've revealed everything, you can collect any tokens that you want. So I'm gonna take an XP and I'm gonna take this. This is the objective cards. So as a free action, if I collect anomalies or you, or get three of rotation on a council world with a warbound outpost, I can exhaust these objectives to remove the outposts to give myself more breathing room before I lose. And to, I can spend this token to refresh them because uh, this is the symbol for the objective card in, in, every, in every mode of play. Uh, so my first action is going to be to scan. I could blow this ship up, but we really would like to do missions. There's an ice world here. We could do a mission over there. We could run away. I don't have really good numbers to spend. The interceptor, I need a three or four. I have a two. So I could I could roll my weapon charges as a hit. But I don't really have a good option there. Thinking we should we should move and just try to do a mission. We do ravel, rally criminal elements, it gives me five shields. Let's try to do that. Uh, so I'm going to spend this to make this a six, <clears throat> which will give me the warp to that location. But I don't have a, it's not a blue die. So I'm going to have to spend it on this bottom location, which is the wild die symbol. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's going to let me jump to this system. And I can pick which sector I want to be on. I want to be on the desert biome. And then I'm gonna see if I can complete this mission. Well, I might not be able to. I need three skills. I do not have the skills I need. I don't have the telescope. So I've moved here, but uh, I cannot complete a mission. So my turn's over and Hopefully everyone's, hopefully I'm doing a good job of explaining this. I have a lot less experience explaining this than Todd does. He was at Unpub this past weekend, playtesting this stuff, and then we playtested again this week to sort of nail down this co-op mode. Uh, so we're gonna get Terror here. Three is gonna activate, which is gonna be this big boy. And he's gonna go one, two, one, two, three, towards my outpost here. Let me put the terror on the world already. Oh, we have three here now, so they're gonna get their first outpost. And now if terror were ever to go to the outpost, instead it spreads to the next nearest outpost, uh, a world without, without an outpost, I should say. So their terror will spread, will jump uh, to the next world so they can fill up all five locations. 
Okay. Um, I could draw up cards, and I'd probably be able to complete that mission. But what I really need is more people. I wonder if I should tap this guy. Yeah, I'm going to tap him and use his ability. Which is to recruit a guy of five or less. And we need this symbol. So this guy may be good. Or she may be good. He doesn't have the right symbol. She has the right symbol. She recruits more crew, which I like. She's worth more value, too. So I'll take her. Uh, but then I have to discard her. And to show you the diversity of actions on your ship, that was a free action. My first action is going to be to play this guy to engineering. Oof. And then I'm going to tap him to draw two cards. I'm going to tap Vander B. And it did give me, I think I can do it now, it gave me the card I need. So let's look at this mission here. Rally criminal elements. I need this skill. This skill. And Vander V, who I just used, I'll use them. I'll retire them from the ship as well. So that gives me all the skills. And I have three, three, seven, which is more than five. So I'm going to complete this mission. And I can pick the order that these people are going to go on the bottom of. So I wanted to go this, this order. This is awkward in Tabletop Simulator. but much easier to put cards on the bottom of a deck in real life. Uh, and then I get this effect, gain five shields and two weapon charges. So three shields max at five, so I maximize my shields. And then I gain two rep at the nearest world from where I am, which is here. And I put out another outpost on the sector I'm in to block future missions there. And I think those are my two actions. So I played the engineering. Oh, I just played the engineering. I didn't do anything else. I think my next action, because I've got low dice left, is going to be to rest. So resting untaps all of your promoted crew and recovers. All recovers and rerolls your dice. You can choose to keep any dice you want at their value, but I had a one and two, which were not useful. So that's me my second action, and we'll go over to the warbound. We have a five. So five will activate. This guy's gonna come right in here and blast me. But I have five shields now. So one and four, block both of them. Shields go down to three. <clears throat> I do have emergency jump, which I could use when I'm attacked to jump away. It's a reaction to being attacked. So I should not forget about that. Because that's a pretty good effect. Okay, now it's my turn. I didn't roll this one. Mm. 
we need to reduce one of the rep here because they're tear. What do I want to do? I feel like I want to jump out of here or repair. I have a decent engineer. Well, first I should probably kill the guy who's on me. No, I got to jump away because the big guy's coming. So I'm going to do a blind jump. I'm going to play a one, which gains me just one power. And I can jump to any one, which are all the unrevealed tiles out there. I'm going to pick this one. You can orient the tile however you want, pick which space you're on. I'm going to land on this desert world. And then my turn is my first action. My next action is going to be to play someone engineering. And then I have XP to spend at the end of my turn. So I'm going to spend that XP to... Oh... I want to get a new guy. I'm going to get this guy who repairs damage. The number doesn't matter when you recruit with XP. You can just get any guy from the market you like. Okay, that's my turn. So the Warbound will go. We have a six. They're on, they are on one and six. So this guy's going to fly four spaces towards me. One, two, three, four. Doesn't reach me, doesn't attack. And then we're going to get a terror on this world. It's a lot easier to figure out where these guys are going in one player. I've been playing, you know, multiplayer co-op primarily. So it's a lot easier to figure out. The enemies are always just going towards you in a single player. You have to think about and count who's closest. Okay, I need to keep doing missions or we're just going to be stuck. A few more to go before I can get to the finale. Not sure if I'll be able to finish by 2 o'clock, but we'll try. That also recruits a guy, which is good. We do not have... Let's do a helm action because we haven't done it yet. So, let's play this guy to Helm, and then we'll play a 6 and spend 1 power to do a Helm action. Now, Helm is sort of like your normal movement, uh, so we can move 6 spaces. So, I'm going to go 1, 2, and whenever you're in a new sector, you flip it, and this, and you resolve the thing before you stop your movement. Um, so this means we're going to spawn an interceptor, and they're going to take a pot shot at me. So they have two attack, and I have three shields left. I block the four, my shields will go down to two, and then I take the five. Uh, so that's one. I'm going to do two, three. There's an XP. I'll take that. Four, five. My goal was to get to this ice world because, <clears throat> you know, we can. There's two ice missions out here that we can do. Five. I'm going to try to do this one. Well, maybe not. What does this give me? Repeat the reward. I would rather complete it. I want to save that reward. I'm going to try to do this. Because I only need one guy with one skill. And this guy may be able to do this mission by himself. Yeah. So I'm going to just one card, one card. I'm going to discard this last guy from my hand. He'll complete the mission. It maxes my power again. Keeping my power nice and healthy. And I get one reputation here, which is just going to remove that terror that's there. And it gets my last outpost out.
And then we get another mission, which is good because we go back and do that here. Okay. Oh wait, hold on. I have XP to spend. I'm gonna spend an XP to upgrade this guy, to promote this guy. Now it's their turn. They've got four. So they're gonna put a Terra right where I removed it. And then four is gonna activate. They're on one and five only. So we're gonna read the card, which is ambush. The gunboat jumps to your ship's face and attacks. And the gunboat does a ton of damage and my shields are down to two. So the gunboat does four. Good shield roll, come on. I block a one. And then I take the rest. So, two, three. I should have emergency jumped. I'm not going to rewind it though. Ouch. I'm about to take some hull damage. I need to, need to repair my turn. I wonder if the gunboat should take this outpost. I don't think it should. I'm just going to leave it as ambush for now. It's a good question for Todd, though. Okay, my turn. Uh, first things first. I'm going to spend a five and one power on engineering. Now, on engineering, for each value of the die, you can repair one damage. So I'm going to go one, two, three. And then you can use other pips of your dice to transfer into shields and weapon charges. So I did three, and then I've got two more, which I'm going to put into shields. And then my second action is going to be to take a shot at the gunboat. I'm going to attack it with a five for one power. Um, and I have three weapon charges. So I'm going to roll my three weapon charges. And then I have a five. So this is the damage I send to the ship. And that is a really good attack. Because you can see over here on the ship, I'm going to hit the five, the six, the four, and the three. So like that attack couldn't have gone better. But because I hit with all my weapon charges, my extra weapon charges, they're going to go back to zero. Because again, you only spend them if you hit with them. Uh, and I'm going to get those rewards for everything I've covered up. So I'm going to get three power and XP. I'm going to draw two crew and get a rep. So my rep is going to remove this. I have XP here. Three power is going to max me out again. I'm trying to get an anomaly so we can see that. That's how you do everything. Three power, one XP, and then I draw two brew. On the top of my deck. Um, so I've spent all my actions, but I can use this to recruit a crew. And discard. I'm gonna keep getting guys from the center. I like that. I get this human. And then end of my turn. I'm gonna spend an XP to recruit to my hand. I need more power. Dice manipulation, maybe? I'm going to get this guy for skills. Okay, I'm going to play a couple more turns here. So we're coming up on the hour market. Mark. 
one. Do you have anyone out of one? Five and four. Suicide run. The closest Emperor Interceptor moves towards your ship and attacks and destroys itself if it can. One, two, three. You can't jump into my space. I already have two guys there, so just move towards me. And we whiffed on that, which is good. So now it's my turn. I'm going to spend my ion cannon. Because it'll do one critical ship, ship, one critical damage, which just means I can pick which number it hits. And we'll defeat the gunship. And it'll give me another rep. On the world I'm on. And then my next reaction, I'm going to do this to change this to a four. I'm going to use this four in three power to scan. We'll scan here. Six, that exceeds it. I'll take the XP. No anomaly yet. And then I can scan next to each of my outposts. I have all three outposts out. So I'm going to scan here. Here. There's an anomaly. And where's my other one? Here, I could reveal this one. missing a token. Uh, I'll collect this anomaly so we can see it. So when you take an anomaly, we have an anomaly deck over here, which I'll shuffle. And anomalies are generally bad, but you can discard crew to get a free effect. So we have a drive malfunction. Take one critical hit. Critical hit bypasses my shields. I'm just going to roll a die and put it on that station. Five. Then roll an unspent die and take a gravity drive action using the result and lose three power. So I'll roll this. It's a three. I'm going to gain three power and lose three power for the drive action. I have to jump to a three. I think my best bet is to go here. Okay, I only have one dice left. I may need to rest. Can't do a mission here because the outpost blocks it. Can't scan. Yeah, I think I need to rest. So I'm going to untap all my promoted crew and reroll my dice. I do have XP saved up though. I'll spend the XP to take this guy. Six. Three. And now it's over to them. Two.
does a two activate? Three, five, does not. So launch, so the gunboat is on the board, so it's gonna launch at the biome shown on this card. It's gonna launch right here. Respawn. My turn, and my first action is going to be Hey, Maddie, I am having a good time. I'm going to scan. Before, I'll flip this one. Guess I'll take that. I don't really need it. And then there's a mission we can do. I can also flip next to my outpost. I can flip this one. Another XP. Flip here. I'll take that anomaly. Take two critical hits, you may exhaust one of your ship upgrades to prevent that damage. I think I have to do that. And then if I want to research this anomaly for its special effect, I need to discard somebody with that symbol. Which I will. I'll discard this guy. To keep this for its effect. I'll put that over here. Its effect is I can trash it to swap one of my ship grades with available ship grades from any faction. It starts exhausted. So I get a different ship upgrade if I needed it. I don't feel like I do. I'm going to helm for two power, two spaces. I'm going to go one space. Two spaces, take it on an asteroid. I'm going to try to do his asteroid mission. I need the first and fifth skill and four points. There's one guy. Do I not have anybody with that skill? Are you kidding me? Wow. Don't have that skill. It's unbelievable. <clears throat> Can't do that mission. So my turn's gonna end. I'll discard this. And I'm gonna get a guy with that skill for next time. Recruit a guy. Their turn. Six will get a terror. It's two. Six activates. They are on a two and a three and a five. So we'll read this instead. Choose an interceptor to jump to the council world shown. I'll choose this interceptor. Remove any player outposts that are there. There's not. What is the most interesting game I've played recently? Maddie is asking me. Um, well, at Unpub, I played this game about managing uh, like an 1800s, early 1900s graveyard. And you had to fill up your board by putting little graves in it. I mean, it was a prototype, so it was all white. But that was a, that was a neat little game at Unpub, uh, which is all the unpublished games. They have like a conference where you can play them and help give feedback. So I thought that grave grave game was sort of unique and interesting. Uh, but published game that I've played, um, video game, I've been playing Helldivers 2. Published game that I'm looking towards playing, 
What was the last thing I played? I played Fractal not too long ago. Uh, the games I really... I played Wormspan. That was... that I liked Wormspan more than Wingspan. Uh, what other games have I played? I've been meaning to play uh, Sleeping Gods Fallen Skies, the second one. And I just got my own copy of Heat, the racing game, uh, which I really liked. I played it at a friend's house, but then like it was really hard to find and print. Like all the copies are like a hundred bucks because it was such a hot commodity, and I don't think they printed enough. I waited, I waited like a year to finally get that. So I'm looking forward to actually playing my copy of that game. So those are a few. Uh, Any ups, uh, upcoming games I'm excited to play? Uh, let's, all right, I'm going to stop my playthrough. So we're getting some good questions here from Maddie. Uh, I am going to look at my Kickstarter list of games and see what I have like in the pipeline. And I'll pick one. So let me switch over. Then we'll finish up. So. I'm gonna answer this question, but before I do, uh, thank you for watching this playthrough of the co-op co -op version that we're sort of developing, the co-op episode for Star Driven Gateway. Hopefully, watching me play has given you some idea of the mechanics. Again, this game's coming to crowdfunding later in the year. So, uh, you know, keep an eye out for that. You can follow along on our page on GameFound. But I think that's gonna cover it for sort of what we're working on this week and I'll answer these few questions and then we'll sign off because we're right around that two o'clock mark and I don't like to have the stream last too long and of course it's always up for people to watch on demand as well so let's look at my Kickstarter list to find out what game I'm excited to play it's a good question nothing comes to mind the most recent thing I backed was the altered uh, TCG. And I just went in for like 30 bucks to get a couple decks to try it. I wasn't, I'm not, I'm not that excited for it. I just thought it was interesting. Uh, other games on my Kickstarter list I see, but I haven't gotten yet. Uh, I actually have a lot of this stuff here. I haven't, I guess I, there's not a lot that I don't have my Kickstarter list that I haven't received yet. I got the Fox Experiment recently from Kickstarter. I like that. Uh, I'm waiting on Skyrise, which looks cool. Like you build like a city Skyrise. It's from uh, Roxley. So the production looks really good on it. So that looks good like component wise. I, I backed a more indie game called Leviathan Wilds. Uh, but the game I'm probably most excited of that I see on this list is Dead Cells. Uh, which is based on a video game. It's one of my favorite video games, like indie video games, which it's like a randomly generated Metroidvania. So I would say my most excited board game that's coming is probably Dead Cells. Okay, any more questions? Okay, I think that'll do it for us. Those are some good questions about... Uh, games I've been playing and interested in and uh, for everyone who watched and will watch in the future thanks for watching if you have any other questions please hit us up on our discord uh, we do monthly play tests where we'll walk you through any of the games we're working on and we do monthly streams where we cover some of the stuff we're working on uh, but we also have rules I mean you can play the mod that I showed in this thing yourself with the rule book that's sort of a work in progress play with your friends online uh, we also have sign-up forms where if you want to make sure you reserve a spot to be led through a game, we'll, we'll be there. Um, but I think that'll do it for us this month. We'll see you next month. Uh, currently, I'm looking for playtests of a game that I'm designing and working on. It's a heist game set in the 1980s. So I've been working on the Tabletop Simulator mod for that. And I would love to playtest that with any playtesters out there online. So if you're interested in that, please sign up on our Discord. We have a link there. You know, to a Google form where you can sign up with your playgroup. Uh, happy to be guide you through that. And other than that, thanks for watching. If you have any other questions about what we have in our pipeline, please tune in next time or send us something uh, in our Discord chat. And we'd be happy to answer it. But until then, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.
And that'll do it.